All right, and um, Ben Norton, we were having lots of uh, too many Bens, so there was uh, anti-Ben dissimulation and um, Ben apentheses going on, which is why Jamin got rid of his. Uh, feel free to share your screen and uh, put your slides on, on full screen. Excellent, and uh, your mic is working, Ben. I know you're muted right now. Yes, good morning from Japan. <clears throat> from Japan, all right. So we have a, another uh, future visitor from the far east. The future uh, looks bright. <laughs> in the land of the rising sun. Indubitably. Um, so our final talk for today's half of the conference, um, or tomorrow's today, half of the conference for, th for the Bens among us, uh, is an introduction to the Nurama language, if I am presenting that correctly. Yes. And uh, Ben, I will pass it over to you to, to go ahead. All right. Um, excuse my groggy voice. It's 6 a.m. here in Japan, but I'll do my best. Um, I'm so excited to get to talk to you all today. Um, and so I'll do my best to contain my excitement. Ramade Nurema Jail. Uh, I will briefly talk about uh, my language, Nurema. Jarlene Herjama Ben de Havokel Nurema Jail. Hello, my name is Ben, and I created the Nurema language. All of the information I introduced today is also included in my videos on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check that out. Some background. Personal background, um, I'm a very novice uh, conlanger. Um, I'm a humble language enthusiast. So many of the terms I use will probably not be uh, those shared among the um, community of people making languages uh, <laughs> at university level. I don't have a formal background, uh, but I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to speak to you today. So Narama is a spoken and written language I created for a graphic novel I'm working on. These are the characters in the graphic novel. The main character's name, Sahashi, and another character named Naluna. In this graphic novel, um, there is an island inhabited by the native Omadi. You can see their language on the bottom. And also uh, visitors called the Nurema. Nurema means new land in their language. So a lot of the content I create is comparing these two conlangs that I've created. I have a shirt in kind of proto Omadi, and then I have a hat in, uh, in Narama. So I'm a little decked out today. So some more background. When I use the same alphabet I made for Narama to write English, the alphabet is called Nordish. For example, in Nordish, hello is written as hello and pronounced as hello. Uh, but if I use the same alphabet to write my language in Narama, it becomes Jarlim, which means hello. Um, when I first created the script, I used it to write English. And then a few years back, I decided to make a language using a spoken language using this alphabet. So I kind of reverse engineered it. And I'll talk a little bit about my uh, thought process with that. Of course, using the same alphabet to write various languages is similar to how the Latin or Roman alphabet is used to write various languages. For example, English and French. I get a lot of comments about my uh, language Nurema that it looks very similar to Arabic, and I don't necessarily disagree. Uh, there are some similarities, but there's plenty of differences as well. Um, Nurema is written left to right. Arabic is traditionally written right to left. Also, Arabic has a lot of circles, simply put. My language doesn't have these circles, uh, but there are some similarities. Um, over the years, uh, some people have uh, gotten tattoos in my language and friends of mine. Um, and so I try to make some Narama art and Nordish art as well. I think fellow conlangers uh, have all imagined seeing the world in their conlangs. So I've also created some content to imagine what it might look like in the digital world as well. Uh, just for comparison, this is handwritten Narama and cursive Narama. So a full list of consonants. Again, I'll briefly go through this since all of this information is available in other facets and websites online. But you'll see a pattern where there's beginning consonants, medial consonants, and final consonants. So the full list of vowels 
are these. I tried my best to write it in IPA as well. And so I'd like to start uh, describing the Narama language by talking about vowels. So Narama has five basic vowels. They are a, e, u, a, o. I'm sure a lot more advanced conlangers are rolling their eyes because the five vowel system is uh, commonly used. It's used in my second language, Japanese. So there's a bit of borrowing there. But you can see in the construction of the vowels, um, there's a similarity where there's a hook and a base, and the stem is what's dictating the vowel sound. So a, ah, e, u, a, o. So as I alluded to earlier, there's a hook, there's a base, and a stem. And so to have some uniformity, the hook and the base are the same for the vowels, but the stem is what's dictating the vowel sound. So these are called single vowels. This is no means a linguistics term. It's just the term I used for it. But in the Narama language, you also have flowing vowels. Flowing vowels are used for words with more than one syllable. It's simply for aesthetic reasons. The pronunciation does not change. So you have a, e, u, a, and o. And lastly, you have final vowels. Final vowels are used for words that end in a vowel. A, e, u, a, o. So next we'll move on to some vocabulary, pronouns. So this verb to be is very important in the Narama language and technically pronouns are verbs. So if I put a consonant in front of a uh, verb that conjugates it, so if I put the H sound in front of a, it becomes ha and that means me or I am. If I put a T in front of it, it becomes U or you are. If I put a Z or Z in front of it, it becomes he or she is. It's gender, gender neutral. So next I'd like to talk about the diacritics, group one diacritics. So if I put a diacritic on this vowel on the bottom, A becomes R. So this line at the bottom is giving it the R sign, as in the English word star. E becomes ear, as in the word ear. U becomes er, as in the word sure. A becomes air, as in the word air. And O becomes or, as in the word or or door. Next, possessives. So, ha is I am. If I put that dot on the bottom, the pronunciation becomes har. And the meaning is mine. So naturally, ta becomes tar, and that means yours. Za, meaning he or she, becomes zar, which would mean his or hers. There's another group of diacritics with a dash on the top. So a becomes a, as in the word map. E becomes i, as in the word dish. U becomes a, as in the word cup, I guess a schwa, if you will. Two dots on the bottom uh, give the vowel kind of a slight E sound. So U becomes U uh, as in the word should, could, would. A becomes A as in the word day. O becomes OI as in the word toy. And then we have this other diacritic. Um, it's somewhat of a diphthong. So I and then our, or I'm sorry, ow, as in the word now. And then you can add a dash at the bottom with this diacritic. And even though it's technically not one syllable, uh, it's fire, ire, as in fire, or our, as in the word our. So verbs. Um, when I was reverse engineering this uh, language, and as you can see by the diacritic marks, I was using this alphabet to write English. Um, I decided uh, to make different categories based on these diacritics. So if a word starts with 
one of these five verbs without any, or one of these five vowels without any diacritics, then it's a verb. So the plain form of all verbs start with a basic vowel. And each basic vowel is associated with a certain body part. So a is mouth, e is eyes, u is ears, a is nose, and o are hands. So then the, uh, when I create verbs based on these parameters, um, I can kind of correlate them to which body part is predominantly being used. So to speak, to taste start with ah because it's associated with the mouth. To see um, is naturally associated with eyes, but also to move because we move our eyes a lot throughout our lives. <laughs> uh, ears are to hear and also to think because you can somewhat hear your thoughts. Um, nose is naturally to smell. And then to meet, uh, the characters in my book have a heightened sense of smell. Um, so when they meet someone, uh, they uh, recognize their, uh, I guess, personalized scent. So that's associated with meeting. And then hands are to touch and also to feel as an emotion. So as an example for verb conjugation, I'll use ella, which means to meet. So verbs are conjugated using a consonant or affix. So as I demonstrated earlier, if I put an H in front of the verb, it becomes uh, associated with myself. So I meet, Tella, you meet, Zella, he or she meets. And then Nella, if I put an N in front of it, it negates it. So this is a negative tense. Vela makes it past tense. Mela uh, makes it present progressive tense. Lela is future tense. And here's a complete list of affixes for conjugating verbs. Um, because of the limited time, I didn't go into too much detail, but um, as you can see uh, with beginning consonants, medial consonants, and final consonants, um, final consonants also have a stem just like vowels. And so those stems match to the preceding vowel. So this is kind of a order of operations in, in a mathematical sense uh, for verb conjugation. So you would start with the, the prefix, uh, for example, starting with myself, the pronoun, and then going level by level, going down uh, based on how you're conjugating or how many conjugations you have. So let's look at an example. So since all pronouns in Narama are technically verbs, Pronouns can also be conjugated using suffixes. So again, a, pa becomes I am. So if I wanted to make this past tense, I was, it becomes have. And as you can see, I'm using the final consonant version. If I want to say I am not, it becomes han. And if I want to say I was not, Based on this order of operations, we have uh, H first, V next, and then N. So have na. Um, in my language, there's varying degrees of politeness. This is the chart that's used for the most polite version. But uh, in the book that I'm working on, the youth kind of uh, changed this up a bit, just like you might have Verlon in French, uh, where you switch consonants around or just switch syllables around. Um, or how in the English language you might have phenomenon such as ask becoming ax. Um, I believe this is called uh, metithesis, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I have this in my language as well, where the youth might switch this up. So instead of saying have not to say I was not, they might say han va, much to the dismay of the older generation in the book. <laughs> hmm. So as you can see here, I'm highlighting where this verb conjugation is happening. So going back to the verb ella, meaning to meet, if I have more of a complex sentence here, hav ta means I did not meet you. The word o means to have, again, it's associated with the hand's possession. Ho means I have. Hov means I had. Hov nela tave means I have not met you before. So adjectives. In this next category, you will see that all of the adjectives have a little dash underneath. Um, uh, I'll talk about this more in detail. <laughs> Each adjective has one of these letters in its initial syllable. 
So the word for good in Narama is jar. As I said earlier in the presentation, jar alim means good day and equates to hello. You can also have a dash not under the vowel, but in between a consonant and a vowel. For example, the word kri means fun. So in its initial syllable, it should have one of these dashes underneath that indicate it's an adjective. The next category and last category are nouns, naturally. So the other diacritics are allocated to nouns. What's nice about this system and kind of the reverse engineering of it is if you're learning this language and you don't know a word, you can tell if the word is a verb, adjective, or noun simply based on the diacritic marks it has or doesn't have. Each noun has one of these letters in its initial syllable. For example, alim, jar alim, meaning good day. Alim means day, which is a noun. So you can also capitalize vowels. Um, this is lowercase alim. If I put this little X looking letter, that capitalizes the vowels, which you would use at the beginning of sentences or in a formal set uh, setting. So Narama grammar is a generally subject verb object like English. For example, haji nim, I eat fish, ha, haji, nim. Simple enough. So um, I use uh, some apps to make this uh, typable on my computer. Um, again, I'm a novice con -langer, so uh, I don't have the most advanced technology, but I use iFont Maker on my iPad. And then I use Art Text versions three and four to kind of um, edit the text. Uh, and uh, even though I haven't created many fonts in it, I can kind of edit the fonts in, into various ways. Um, I'm working on uh, creating a complete dictionary. Of course, I have my own dictionary, but it's a little raw. And so I'm trying to make a presentable dictionary. So that's the most recent project that I'm working on, kind of a pocket dictionary. For Narama. So this concludes uh, my presentation. I know I have about five minutes left for questions. So Tor Kakan, do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ben. You're getting a lot of love in the YouTube comments. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, for including like the five vowel system, which you clearly have more than a five vowel system, just I guess five yeah. vocalic roots or something like that. And yeah. um, it is the job of every generation to change the language just enough to annoy the generation before it. <laughs> uh, to which uh, someone in here said, uh, Matt Pearson said, uh, basically in Narama, metathesis encodes OK Boomer. <laughs> I love it. That's it's brilliant. Uh, I haven't seen any specific questions, just a lot of love for your, your okay. fonts that you created, uh, a lot of love for, you know, basically everything you're doing, including the pronouns as verbs. So I'm going to latch onto that. And what was the inspiration? I, I love it too. Just like, you know, it's art is a unique thing. I, I view my conlanging as art. I think everybody views their own conlanging in a different way. Maybe they're trying to optimize language. Um, you know, we, we all have different reasons for conlanging. I, I, I personally view it as art. Um, and so, you know, the, the inspiration, it's hard to say where it comes from. Um, the, I guess the, the biggest, um, um, I'm sorry, it's 6 a.m., so I'm still thinking. <laughs> I guess the biggest um, success I had in, in the beginning was the, the STEM system. Um, and from that little epiphany, these smaller epiphanies just kept coming. But this is 20 years in the making. Uh, I started working on this alphabet in middle school, just doodling in class. And uh, over time, I saw some patterns with my doodles, and uh, I just kept drawing until... Um, you know, I was able to come up with the alphabet that I have and then reverse engineer it. So I wish I had a concrete answer. Um, but using different modes was definitely an inspiration from, you know, of course, the the almighty J.R. Tolkien, where he uses different modes for Tenguar, where it's Quenya, Sindarin, Maigovan, and Melonin to those out there. Um, and Kapla, Nuknak to you as well. Um, <laughs> so, Konosatatu, uh, if you will. Um, so, yeah, just various. And, and you know, uh, with Japanese being my second language and Japanese being pretty unique, as many languages are, 
Um, I'm sure I've drawn some inspiration from the complexities of Japanese. That's awesome. And I, I think you asked, answered the other question of what were your inspirations for the orthography? Obviously you were doodling mm -hmm. and it just reverse engineered out of that. Yeah. So it's a more um, artistic uh, approach. Mm -hmm. That's, that's brilliant. Um, I'm not seeing other questions yet. If anyone on the, the zoom wants to ask a question, unmute you're, you're welcome to. I guess I can open up my chat here. Oops, <laughs> uh, kind of jumping ahead. Sorry about that, people. <laughs> um, if anyone's interested in Omadi as well, I have lots of videos about that. Um, it's kind of fun to compare some people like Omadi a little bit more than Narama. Um, Omadi oh is uh, pretty much Japanese grammar <laughs> repurposed um, based on some Polynesian languages. And um, and that is the five vowel system, uh, purely no diacritics. So, <laughs> I, I think Jamin said in the, the YouTube chat when you first started that yeah. um, Jamin loves the Omadi script as well. Yes, we, he we has commented. Yeah, and, and I appreciate the love there because um, since Narama is more developed, uh, unfairly i kind of put omadi as a secondary language because it's less developed um but i'm i'm still working on that as well so i'm glad that people like that are orthography as well yeah uh, so i definitely encourage you to hop over to the youtube you're going to get a confidence boost uh, looking oh, well, at all the love you. you're getting over there <laughs> and uh thank you so much for uh, joining us so early in the future yeah and presenting it's an absolute honor arigat thank you gozai much for those who like japanese puns have a good rest of the evening, everybody. Thank you.